I'll start. My name is Carl Graywall. I'm a trainee for Team 15, and I'm a clinical psychology PhD student at the University of Saskatchewan, supervised by Dr. Megan O'Connell. My research primarily focuses on individualized interventions for people living with dementia that are non-pharmacologic in nature. Hi, my name is Shirley Dumasse, trainee on CCNA's Team 17, a master's student from the School of Optometry at the Université de Montréal under the supervision of Dr. Walter Wittish. Hi everyone, my name is Gabrielle Aubin. I am currently a trainee with Team 17. I am also a first year PhD student in clinical neuropsychology at the Université de Montréal. I am supervised by Dr. Walter Wittich and Dr. Natalie Phillips. My name is Dr. Megan O'Connell. I'm a clinical psychologist and professor of psychology at the University of Saskatchewan. I co-lead Team 15 on in Team 15 focused on rural dementia care. My work focuses on using technology to remotely deliver behavioral and psychological interventions to persons living with dementia and their family members. Hi there, I'm Walter Wittich, and I'm an associate professor at the School of Optometry, Université de Montréal. Together with Natalie Phillips, I'm co-lead of Team 17 of the Canadian Consortium on Neurodegeneration and Aging, and I specialize in working with older adults that have vision, hearing, and cognitive impairments. Hi, I'm Natalie Phillips. I'm a professor in the Department of Psychology at Concordia University. Within the CCNA, I'm the Associate Scientific Director, and I also lead, along with Walter Wittich, Team 17. That's our sensory cognitive team. What feels like many moons ago, I gave a CCNA Talking Brains webinar on how to take your research from zero to 100 using remote methods. And in that talk, I discussed the challenges associated with using established tools and adapting them for remote delivery without any sense of how mode of delivery impacts measurement properties. There is need to establish the measurement properties of remotely administered tools such as the MOCA. Oh, this gives me an idea. Let me call my lab. Hi. Um, do you remember when we tested people with low vision over the past year and we went to their homes and we administered the MOCA? I was thinking maybe we could retest them over the phone this time. Great. We should team up with Team 15. I like it. Let's do it, ladies. Carl. I really don't think you need all of this. You know, we're, we're on Zoom. Oh, better safe than sorry, I guess. The current COVID-19 pandemic has compelled research teams to move their studies to remote methods in order to respect sanitary guidelines. However, many of the tests administered in such circumstances have not been validated yet to be used remotely. Furthermore, with cognitive screening tools such as the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, or MOCA, it is crucial to ensure the measure of cognitive functions is unaffected by the sensory abilities of patients or other factors. The valid and reliable telephone administration of the MOCA has been reported in these various populations. You're right, Carl. There are validated versions of a telephone administered MOCA. However, those have been validated for populations that have vascular MCI and mild stroke. And in this case, we're talking about older adults who have significantly low vision, may have a number of important characteristics that make them a unique sample. Therefore, I think it's really important that we validate a telephone administered MOCA for that group as well. And this is where we come in. There is currently a validated version of the MOCA for visually impaired in-person administration, the MOCA blind, where the visual items are removed. 
However, clinicians and researchers must be mindful of modifying these standardized tests when administered in other modalities. In fact, these alterations might not be adapted for all clinical groups, may jeopardize the integrity of the tests, or might lead to a misinterpretation of the results. What do you think, Shirley? I completely agree with you, Carl. However, let's not also forget that we should consider the feasibility and the subjective experience of remote testing. With the change of modality, there is also a need to refine the guidelines of administration, especially in a sensory impaired population. And to establish these guidelines, participants are a great source of data. However, it is also important not to neglect the perspective of the test administrators. Therefore, performing qualitative data collection from a phenomenological approach, both from the perspectives of the participants as well as the test administrators is critical because the validity of the test is only as good as its administration and its reception. Taking into account all of the information mentioned here, our first objective is to determine the test retest variability of the mucoblind when administered over the phone compared to in person. The second objective is to identify the facilitators and the barriers of conducting research over the phone from both the perspective of the research participants and the test administrators. This project will use a test retest methodology. At time one, participants were tested in person in their homes in 2019 and 2020. At time two, because of COVID-19, it was impossible to test the participants in their homes, and we decided to use a remote approach. They will be tested over the phone for the retest, starting in October 2020. For time one, all the measures you see on the screen were part of a much bigger research project that is currently ongoing in our research lab. The measures in orange, so the MOCA blind and the demographic questionnaires, are the one we will be using in our current remote protocol. At time two, participants will complete a COVID-19 questionnaire to explore the effect of the pandemic on their mental health, a telephone use questionnaire to establish their familiarity with the phone modality, the MOCA blind, and they will also take part in a semi-structured interview in order to discuss their experience in participating in a research project over the phone. Our participants are older adults with low vision as well as normally sighted older adults. An additional aspect of our study will examine the experience of the research assistants that will conduct the testing sessions. They will complete a report after each testing session they conduct to report on the barriers and facilitators of the phone modality, as well as a global questionnaire at the end of the project to reflect back on their experience of testing over the phone. In terms of analysis, quantitatively, we will be employing bland Altman equivalency plots, and qualitatively, we will be employing content analysis. Research to develop validated remote assessment tools are particularly important for individuals living in remote locations in the country. Having such a validated approach to remote assessment will be useful for working with older adults that are living with a sensory impairment and will help us identify and prevent cognitive decline even during a pandemic. Good luck. I think you've got a really good project that you've proposed. I hope you win. We really do hope that you enjoyed our presentation and that this uh, research project is of interest to you. And if you want more information, come check out our poster. 